One of the earliest known dinosaurs and one of the earliest sauropodomorphs, Aeoraptor lived during the late Triassic in the region that is now northwestern Argentina. It was a small, lightly built dinosaur measuring 1.3 meters in length and weighing around 10 kilograms it had a lightly built skull with a kink between the maxilla and premaxilla, and a midmandibular joint in the lower jaw. Eoraptor was a swift runner with long hind limbs and hollow long bones, and it had five digits on each hand, with the three longest ending in large claws for handling prey. The dinosaur had a mix of serrated, recurved teeth and leaf-shaped teeth, indicating an omnivorous diet, and it lacked a sliding joint in the lower jaw for holding large prey. Furthermore, only some of its teeth were curved and saw-edged, unlike those in the mouths of later theropods. The heterodont dentition of Eoraptor consists of both serrated, recurved teeth in the upper jaw, like the teeth of theropods, and leaf-shaped teeth in the lower jaw, like the teeth of basal sauropodomorphs. It had four teeth in the premaxilla and eighteen teeth in the maxilla, a dental formula not dissimilar to that of Herorosaurus. Saturnalia was a small, bipedal animal that probably reached a length of 1.5 meters and weighed between 4 and 11 kilograms the skull of Saturnalia was only about 10 centimeters long, giving it a proportionally small head as in other sauropodomorphs. The neck was moderately long and was composed of 9 or 10 vertebrae. Like many other early dinosaurs, but unlike later sauropodomorphs, Saturnalia was most likely carnivorous or omnivorous, with a diet that included insects or small vertebrates. Its small head and long neck may have allowed it to move its head rapidly enough to catch small, elusive prey. The highly basal nature of Saturnalia, combined with its mixture of sauropodomorph and theropod characteristics, has made it difficult to classify. Panphagia fills an important gap in sauropod evolution. It resembled the early dinosaur Eoraptor more than later giant sauropods like Apatosaurus or Brachiosaurus, but it is clearly a sauropodomorph. It shares similarities with another early sauropodomorph, Saturnalia, indicating an early stage of sauropod evolution. This suggests that the sauropod lineage originated earlier than previously thought and hints at the existence of even older dinosaurs. The teeth of Panphagia indicate a possible omnivorous diet, transitional in form between the mostly carnivorous theropods and the herbivorous sauropodomorphs. The teeth in the back of the jaw are shorter than those in the front, are leaf-shaped, and also have more marked serrations. Guibosaurus is the most enigmatic of the Sauriscian taxa. The study provides a detailed anatomical revision of all specimens originally referred to this species, including its type series and a recently excavated partial postcranium. Despite originating from different sites, these specimens share unique traits and at least one possible autopomorphic feature of the pelvis, supporting the species' uniqueness. More recent cladistic analyses have disagreed on the placement of Guibosaurus. Some analyses have found it to be a basal theropod, while others consider it a basal sauropodomorph. Other members of Guibosauridae are generally considered to be very basal sauropodomorphs, and may or may not form a clade with Guibosaurus. Named for the location of its discovery, the Pantwyfin and Quarry in Wales, this early sauropodomorph lived at the very end of the Triassic about 209 to 201 million years ago. It's only known from a partial juvenile skeleton, probably around 1.5 meters long in life, but the full adult size is unknown. Unlike the later quadrupedal plant-eating sauropods, Pantadraco was bipedal and may have been omnivorous. And while we know some of its more famous giant relatives were definitely scaly-skinned, with the increasing evidence for fuzz being ancestral to all dinosaurs it's not too much of a stretch to think these basal prosauropods were still fluffy.
From the fragmentary remains of Thecodontosaurus, most of the skeleton can be reconstructed, except for the front of the skull. This dinosaur's hands and feet each had five digits, and the hands were long and rather narrow, with an extended claw on each. This dinosaur's front limbs were much shorter than the legs, and its tail was much longer than the head, neck and body put together. On average, it was 1.2 meters long, 0 centimeters tall, and weighed 11 kilograms the small size has been explained as an instance of insular dwarfism. Examination of Thecodontosaurus revealed it was exclusively bipedal. Studies of the muscle attachments in its fore and hind limbs suggest that it was an extremely fast bipedal runner that relied on its weaker front limbs for grasping vegetation, cutting it up and feeding it into its mouth. Like most early dinosaurs, Unasaurus was relatively small, and walked on two legs. It was only 2.5 meters long, 70 to 80 centimeters tall, and weighed about 70 kilograms in 2023. Muller and colleagues described the remains of a juvenile specimen of Unasaurus that was found associated with the holotype. It was found in the south of Brazil, which at the time was connected to northwest Africa. The whole world was united into the great supercontinent of Pangaea, which was just starting to divide into Laurasia in the north, and Gondwana in the south. It is one of the most complete dinosaur skeletons ever recovered in Brazil. Platyosaurus, discovered in 1834 by Johann Friedrich Engelhardt and described by Hermann von Meyer in 1837, was the fifth named dinosaur genus still regarded as valid. Although described before Richard Owen named Dinosauria in 1842, Platyosaurus was not used to define the group due to its poor initial understanding. It is now among the best-known dinosaurs, with over 100 skeletons found, some nearly complete. The abundance of fossils in Swabia, in Germany, has led to its nickname, Swabian lindworm. This bipedal herbivore had a small skull on a long, flexible neck, plant-crushing teeth, powerful hind limbs and short but muscular arms with grasping hands and large claws, possibly used for defense and feeding. Unlike most dinosaurs, it exhibited strong developmental plasticity, with fully grown individuals ranging from 5 to 10 meters in length and weighing between 600 and 4,000 kilograms they typically lived for 12 to 20 years, though the maximum lifespan remains unknown. Despite the abundance and quality of fossil material, Platyosaurus was long misunderstood. Early theories about its biology, posture and behavior often conflicted with geological and paleontological evidence. Since 1980, Detailed studies of its taxonomy, taphonomy, biomechanics and paleobiology have significantly altered the interpretation of Platyosaurus, providing a clearer understanding of this dinosaur's life and characteristics. Massospondylus was a mid-sized sauropodomorph dinosaur, around 4 meters in length and weighing approximately 1,000 kilograms it had a slender body, a long neck, and a small head, typical of early sauropodomorphs. The forelimbs were half the length of the hind limbs but quite powerful, with a large thumb claw likely used for feeding or defense. It exhibited little variation in growth rate, unlike its close relative Platyosaurus, and likely grew at a steady rate throughout its life. Studies suggest that it was herbivorous or omnivorous, with cranial characteristics and tooth shapes similar to those of modern herbivorous reptiles. Gastroliths found with some specimens indicate they may have used stones to aid in digestion. Initially thought to be quadrupedal, more recent research suggests Massospondylus was primarily bipedal due to the limited range of motion in its forelimbs. Like all early sauropodomorphs, Lefengasaurus had much longer hind limbs than forelimbs and was probably bipedal. It was herbivorous, although it had sharp claws, with an especially large thumb claw, and teeth. 
These features have been used to support claims, the most recent by Cooper in 1981, that Lefengasaurus may have been at least partially omnivorous, but the sharp teeth witnessed in Lefengasaurus and other early sauropodomorphs are similar to those seen in Iguanian lizards, which are herbivorous. Alternatively, the claws may have been used for defense or raking foliage from trees. Embryos of this genus also represent the earliest evidence of vertebrate soft tissue preservation. Glacialosaurus is known from the Hansen Formation, which is one of only two major dinosaur-bearing rock formations found on Antarctica. The specimens were discovered in tuffaceous siltstone deposited in the early Jurassic. This geological formation is part of the Victoria Group of the Transantarctic Mountains, which is approximately 4,000 meters above sea level. The high altitude of this site supports the idea that early Jurassic Antarctica had forests populated by a diverse range of species, at least along the coast. The Hansen Formation was deposited in an active volcano-tectonic rift system formed during the breakup of the supercontinent Gondwana. Models of Jurassic air flow indicate that coastal areas probably never dropped much below freezing, although more extreme conditions existed inland. Known plants include chyrolepidiation conifers or equisitites horsetails that have also been found or are similar to plants found in other early Jurassic sites that represent warm climates. Basal sauropodomorphs like Glacialosaurus were the first very large dinosaurs and, due to their height, the first herbivores to high browse. Cetad was a sauropodmorph from the Pliensbachian age of the early Jurassic, anywhere between 192 and 184 million years ago. It is known from a partial skeleton, but the skull is still unknown. It was found in the Navajo sandstone of the Glen Canyon Group near Comb Ridge, San Juan County, Utah. It is one of the few North American sauropodomorphs known, and it may have been buried in a landslide from a collapsing sand dune, leading to its name meaning. It was an herbivore, about 4.5 meters long. Digesting plant matter is a much more intensive biochemical process than digesting meat. Anchisaurus swallowed gastroliths to help break down the food in its stomach. Herbivorous dinosaurs needed a huge gut. Since this had to be positioned in front of the pelvis, balancing on two legs became increasingly difficult, as dinosaurs became larger and they gradually evolved into the quadrupedal position that characterizes the later sauropods such as Diplodocus. Prosauropods represented a middle phase between the earliest bipedal herbivores and the later giant sauropods. It had fewer and more widely spaced teeth than true prosauropods. Anchisaurus would have spent most of its time on four legs but could have reared up on its hind legs to reach higher plants. As a facultative biped, it had to have multi-purpose front legs. As hands, they could be turned inwards and be used for grasping. It had a simple reversible first finger, similar to a thumb. This unspecialized design is typical of the early dinosaurs. Mosaurus fossils, discovered alongside nests with multiple eggs, reveal that infants were about 20 centimeters long. Juvenile had distinctive proportions, with tall skulls, short snouts, and large eyes, which are typical of species that receive parental care in their early life stages. Adults of Mosaurus were expected to have longer snouts and necks, typical of early sauropodomorphs. As of 2021, Mosaurus is recognized for providing the earliest definitive evidence of complex social behavior in dinosaurs, with over 100 eggs and the remains of 80 individuals, from embryos to adults, found at a single site. This discovery predates previous records of herd-living dinosaurs by at least 40 million years. Growth studies from May 2019 indicate that Mosaurus likely walked on all fours as a juvenile. Its body proportions changed as it grew, causing a shift in its center of mass that led to a bipedal stance later in life. 
Adult Mosaurus weighed between 1.5 metric tons, reaching lengths of up to 8 meters. Melanorosaurus was a later sauropodomorph, a group that includes sauropods and their close relatives, but it was not a true sauropod itself. It was a quadrupedal dinosaur with primitive forelimbs resembling hands, though its hind limbs were sturdy and pillar-like to support its considerable weight. Measuring up to 8 meters long and 2 meters tall, it weighed around 1.3 tons and had a pointed snout with teeth more like earlier prosauropods. The dinosaur had a short neck, long tail, and a thick trunk, and its appearance is debated, whether it had fluff or scales. As an herbivore, Melanorosaurus might have occasionally eaten small animals, and it likely lived in herds for protection from predators. It probably fed on low-lying vegetation but could have occasionally reared on its hind limbs to reach higher plants. <laughs>